Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. Once you've watched this video, you're going to be able to rewrite this fraction as two separate fractions added together. This is called partial fractions. And what we're going to do to start with is just check that you remember how to add ordinary fractions together, then algebraic fractions, and then we're going to look at this kind of example. So let's move this to one side. And now we'll just have a look at how to add a couple of ordinary fractions together. So this should be really simple. We're adding two thirds and a quarter together. And the important thing here is the method that we're using. So what I'm going to do here is show that we've got to multiply numerator and denominator of the first fraction by the denominator in the other fraction. So we're multiplying both the two and the three by four. And similarly, for the second fraction, we're multiplying the one and the four by the denominator in the other fraction. So we're multiplying those both by three. So our denominator is 12, and two fours are eight, one times three, three, so eight plus three, is equal to 11. So our fraction there is 11 over 12. So that should just be very simple revision. The next thing we're going to look at is adding together two algebraic fractions. So we're using the same kind of method that we've used here. So let's just move this to one side. So now we're going to add together something a bit more interesting. So we've got two over x plus five and the other fraction, which we'll add to that, is 1 over x minus 3. So although it looks more complicated than the example we just looked at, it's using the same kind of method. So before we multiplied the denominators together, so we're thinking of it here as multiplying the first fraction by the denominator in the other fraction. Well, that's the the top and the bottom of the first fraction by that. So just as before we multiplied the two and the three both by four, now we're multiplying the two and the x plus five both by x minus three. So we're going to have that the first fraction is equivalent to two times x minus three, and then our denominator will be x plus five times x minus three, because we've multiplied top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing. Remember, x minus three just represents a number. So we've multiplied top and bottom of the, of the first fraction by x minus three. And the same sort of thing for the second fraction, this time multiplying the numerator and denominator both by x plus five. So you can see the similarity with the numerical example that we did. So now we can put the whole thing over the denominator x plus five and x minus three, multiply together. So in this situation, it isn't necessary to multiply out the denominator. We don't need to get just one thing there. In fact, we wouldn't be able to, if we did multiply it out, we'd get um, a quadratic, wouldn't we? Something with an x squared in it, some term in x, and a constant term. But that doesn't really help us to, uh, to do anything here. It's the, the numerator that's going to be simplified in some way. So let's just write down what we've got here. We've got 2 times x minus 3 and um, 1 times x plus 5. And now let's multiply out the numerator. So that will give us 2x minus 6 and x plus 5. And again, we just leave the x plus five multiplying the x minus three. And then we can simplify the numerator because two x plus x is three x. And then negative six plus five will be minus one. And that will be over x plus five times x minus three. So we have added together two algebraic fractions and got a single fraction. Now actually, what we could do is instead of writing equals every time, is write identically equal. And that just means that the two sides are always the same. What 
whatever value x has. So we could write the identically equal symbol there. And the next thing to point out is that what we're doing in partial fractions is actually doing the opposite to what we've just done here. So we would start off with something like our final fraction and end up with the two individual fractions. So what we're going to do now is take this example and see how we would be able to work out what the numbers are. Now you can see that if we look at the fraction that's our answer and the original two fractions that the denominators are really easy. So with the denominators being multiplied together in the answer, x plus 5 and x minus 3, are simply the denominators of the new fractions. So that's the easy bit. It's just working out the other two numbers that involves a little bit of work. So what we're going to do now is put this to one side. And we're now going to start actually doing the question of starting with a complicated looking fraction and writing it as partial fractions. So we're starting with the fraction that we ended up with just now, so obviously we know what the answer is going to be, but you wouldn't usually know it. So we're going to start off by using the identically equal to symbol because we, that we want our answer to be the same as what we've got here for any value of x. So we know that our denominators are going to be the two denominators that we've got multiplied together in our original fraction and we don't know what the numbers are going to be on top so we're going to use letters to represent them a and b so a and b are numbers to be found and then what we do is we add the right hand side together we add those two fractions together so here we're using the usual method of adding fractions so we know we need to multiply top and bottom of the first fraction by the denominator of the other fraction. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 5. So x minus 3 will also be multiplied by x plus 5. And the same sort of thing for the other fraction. We'll be multiplying both numerator and denominator by x minus 3. And then just as we were doing earlier on, we can just write the denominator down once. Really long line needed there. So we've got x minus 3 times x plus 5. It doesn't matter what order we write this in, these in. Remember that x minus 3 times x plus 5 is the same as x plus 5 times x minus 3. And then we're just going to write down these without actually doing any more other than really just writing them as they look there. But they've been combined into one fraction now. Having done this, you can now see that because the denominators are the same on the right hand side and the left hand side, that the numerators must be the same as well. So then that makes life a lot easier. We're no longer dealing with fractions because we can see that 3x minus 1, which is the numerator of the left hand side, must be the same as the numerator on the right hand side so it's a times x plus 5 times b times x minus 3. Now the important thing to remember here is that we've got identically equals and that means that we can put in any value of x and that will be true. So we could choose x is 7 9, 10.3, 0, whatever, it will be true. But remember what we're actually trying to do is to find the values of a and b. So the easiest way to find a and b would be first of all to make the coefficient of, um, what should we choose first, make the coefficient of a 0 to start with, then we'd be able to find b. So we're looking at the x plus 5, we want to make that 0, and to do that we put x equal to negative 5, don't we? So when we substitute in x equals negative 5 into this identity, it's an identity rather than an equation because we've got identically equals. So when we do that, we've got 3 times negative 5, subtract 1 on the left hand side. Now we're just using equals. a multiplies 0, so if you want for completeness, we can put that in. And then b 
is multiplying negative 5, subtract 3. So that gives us, on the left-hand side, negative 15 take away 1, so negative 16. And the right-hand side, b is being multiplied by negative 8. So dividing both, both sides by negative 8 gives us that b is 2. So you can see we can do a similar sort of thing to find what, um, what a is. We now want to get the coefficient of b to be 0. So we want x minus 3 to be 0. So x is going to be 3. So when x is 3, the left-hand side is going to be 3 times 3 minus 1. So that will be 8. And then on the right-hand side, a is going to be multiplying 3 plus 5. So we're going to have 8 times a. And then b is going to multiply 0. So we've just got that 8 equals 8a. So we've got that a is 1. So now we can go back and use the top line and replace the a and the b by 1 and 2. So I've written out the top line again. So all we need to do is to replace the a by 1 and the b by 2. So we have split a complicated looking fraction into two separate fractions. Now, in fact, this was the example that we looked at earlier, so you can see that it is correct. But if you wanted to check it, one way would be to go through all that again. But another quicker way would be to substitute in a value for x and to check that both sides are equal to the same thing. It's not a foolproof method. It doesn't tell you it's definitely right, but it's a good idea. And what I would do, so long as x isn't one of the factors in the, uh, in the denominator, I would substitute in x equals 0. So let's see what that would give us. So if we put x equals 0 into the left-hand side, we can very quickly see that we get, so 3 times 0 is nothing, so we just get minus 1 on top, and then in the uh, denominator we get 5 times minus 3, so that's minus a 15th, so that's 1 15th. And then if we put x equals 0 into the individual fractions, we're going to get 1 over 0 minus 3, which is 1, 3, plus 2 over 0 plus 5 is 5, and 2 fifths minus a third is equal to um, 5 minus 6, so it'll be minus 1 over minus 15. So again, it's equal to a 15th. So that t tells us it's a good chance our answer is correct. It doesn't tell us it's definitely right because we've only checked it for one, one value of x. But it's a quick check that can sometimes show whether or not you've gone wrong. OK, so that's going through the, uh, the method of partial fractions in detail. But there is another way of working out the values for a and b, which is much, much quicker. And it's called the cover-up method. So I'll go through that really quickly. Really, all it's doing is using the method we just used, but kind of doing it in your head. But it, it, it can be very straightforward to do once you're used to the method. So I'll show you how to do it. So we're going right back to the beginning, and instead of writing the a and the b in, we're not even going to bother with that. We're going to write down the values that give the a and the b to start with. So we're going to start by looking at the number that's going to go over the x minus 3. So to do that, we cover up the x minus 3 in the original fraction, and we substitute in the value in the bit that's left that makes x minus 3 equal to 0. So we substitute in x equals 3. So then we just write on top of this fraction what we're going to get. So that's going to be 3 times 3 minus 1 in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to get 3 plus 5. So all I've done is substitute 3 into 3x minus 1 over x plus 5. And then for the other fraction, which has got the x plus 5 in the denominator, I now cover up x plus 5 in the original fraction and substitute in the value that makes x plus 5 equal to 0. So that's minus 5. So that's going to give us 3 times negative 5 minus 1 over negative 5 subtract 3. So then that gives me, when I, when I simplify that, we're going to get 9 minus 1 is 8. 8 over 8 is 1. So that's going to give us 1 over x minus 3. 
and then we've got negative 15 take away 1, so negative 16 divided by negative 8, so that's going to be 2 over x plus 5. So that is how the cover-up method can be used very quickly. So now that you know how to do this, going back to the example we looked at right at the beginning should be something that you can do. So have a go at doing it and write the answer in the comments.